Honorary Professor of Public Health at King's College London and joins us now from Salisbury in the UK. Welcome to the programme. I want to start by asking you why are government reactions uh, to the lockdown so different all around the world? Yes, they're very different. Um, some are very strict, some are less strict. Um, a, lot, a lot is important from the timing, you know, some of them are timed to coincide with with a spike of, of, of the virus. Others are trying to anticipate that and try and get, even, say, two, one or two weeks ahead of the, an anticipated spike in the virus. And some of them involve a curfew uh, in terms of uh, pubs and restaurants and, and bars, etc., closing at, say, 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock. Um, others involve um, closing shops, uh, either uh, um, essential shops or, uh, or non-essential shops. They vary greatly from country to country. And what do you think about the South Australia example? Is it too extreme? Just 36 cases and it's ordered a six full day lockdown, meaning you cannot leave your home unless uh, you know, one person can just for grocery shopping. Well, the importance of having a very strict lockdown is it really does slow the transmission of the virus in, a, in, in quite, a, quite a striking way. And that has been shown uh, in various places around the world over the last uh, eight or nine months. So strict lockdowns do work, um, but they only work on a temporary basis. All they, all they can do is buy you time. And, and even though the numbers of cases in that in, in Australia, they're pretty small, they're trying to put a, a really a strict lid on things so that it buys them time. And they're looking, I suppose, for a, a, a better holiday period where they can relax a bit during the holiday period. And would you agree that governments do, well, give the type of lockdowns that their citizens will agree to? It is, a lot of it you have to balance against what you think the citizens will wear because, you know, there are side effects to lockdowns, as we all know. The mental health side effects, the fact that people are, are thrown out of work, particularly important in, in countries on low-income countries where there, there aren't sort of social uh, safety nets in terms of social insurance, um, etc., furlough schemes and all the rest of it. Uh, in those countries, a lot of... A lot of uh, part-time workers, hourly wage workers, they are thrown into absolute poverty uh, when there's a severe lockdown. So it does depend very much on the country, on the economy of the country, and, and the, the sorts of uh, workforces you have, and the severity of the problem. And when you see the images that we've shown today on our show of people protesting outside the, the parliament in Berlin against coronavirus measures, what goes through your mind? And why do we see these protests against something that can help them? I mean, I, th I think a lot of people just have a sort of gut reaction to that kind of uh, uh, government-imposed uh, impinge impingement on their freedoms. Uh, a lot of people have a sort of libertarian attitude saying, well, we should make the upper decision for ourselves. We know, we know what the risks are. Let us decide for ourselves. The trouble is, from a public health point of view, that's a really bad idea because it just it lets the, the virus run riot. Um, and there will be an awful lot of people who get ill. It will put terrific train, a strain on the health services and, of course, lead to, ultimately to deaths. And, and that, that's the price one pays for, to, for being too libertarian about this. So it's, it's a question of balance. That's a really difficult judgment for governments to make. Thank you so much, Dr. Alan Marion Davis, speaking to us from King's College. Thank you.